welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button and comment down below on videos you'd like to see also hit that share button it helps me out this video is a viewer requested video this was requested on my buying my first horse video on kind of things that you should think about before buying a horse like what you should look for and stuff like that so this is that video i have my laptop down here so i can keep looking down that's why because i've got all my points on here so i'm going to be going across a load of different things that i think you should really think about before just buying a horse so not so much like the money and this and the other stuff. i mean like what you want how old and stuff like that so i'm going to be going through all of that so let's get started so the first thing so before you even start looking, I suggest you think about what breeds you have ridden before and what ones you like and which ones you prefer. There's no point of going out and looking for a thoroughbred when you've never ridden a thoroughbred and you're not sure what they're like, but you want it because it's a thoroughbred. So you might not like the way they move. You might, it's, it's completely different. Like all horse breeds move differently. So have a look at what breed you like and if you know someone that's got a breed that you'd like to try ask them if you could try their horse and see if you actually like the way that horse moves also do the research on the breed that you like see so as much research as you possibly can on the breeds that you're looking at like care are they prone to anything do they need this do they need that do they like what kind of feeding do they need and stuff like that and what kind of rugging if, if you're getting a fine horse you need to look at possibly having more rugs or higher qual um, higher gram rugs and stuff like that which again is not 100% because some horses are hot and some horses are cold so it just it just kind of goes that way so just have a look and do as much research as you possibly can on the breeds that you like and that you're looking into next one Think about what you actually want to do with the horse. There's no point of going out there and saying, oh, I want to get a, a really good show jump or an event up, but then you don't want to event or you don't want a show jump. Or you want just a happy hacker, but then you go out and you get a show jump up. Do you get what I mean? It's kind of like, you need to know what you want to do with, your, with that horse and what that horse has already done and what that horse would be suited to. So if you want a happy hacker, go out and get a happy hacker. Do not get... Um, a show jumper or or something that you're not going to do with that horse that makes sense so get the horse that you want to do what you want to do with there's no point of getting a horse that does everything else but doesn't do what you want it to do next one you need to know whether you want a horse that is actually off the leg or if you want more of a pig along a novice ride or not a novice ride so when people say off the leg there's kind of two there's You've got sharp and you've got off the leg, which are two, I think, are two completely different things. Because you can have a sharp ball that's not off the leg and you can have a sharp ball that you can't even touch it. So, Moon, when I got Moon, she was kind of, she's off the leg. She was just verging on a little bit sharp. Um, but I think it was more her age, so I did kind of, that was something that we could have worked on. So it wasn't like she was an absolute loon. Like you touched her once and that's it, she was galloping off. So I prefer an off the leg horse. I do not like to have a kick, but some people prefer a horse that you don't have to, uh, that you do have to kick or something like that. And then also with the novice ride, like buy a horse that's not gonna over horse yourself. Cause you won't, if the horse is too much for you, you're not gonna enjoy riding it. You're not gonna ride as much and you're just gonna regret it. So, have a look and see actually you have to think about where you're where you're at kind of in novice experience what you want to do with it because then you don't want to get a horse that's too novice that once you um improve that horse is no longer kind of 
it viewed. So you want a novice horse that's built to do a lot of stuff, but it's beginning. So the next one is age. Age is a bit difficult because you could buy or you could steal or whatever a four year old that is absolutely foot perfect, it's storm proof, knows what it's doing, it's got its head in the game and it's absolutely lovely, like it rides, it does everything and then you can go and get a 27 or a 20 year old or a 15 year old that is an absolute nutcase. So age is quite difficult. I normally look between like 6 and 12, maybe a little bit older than like, maybe like 10 or 9 or something like that. But um, Moon was 6, she was younger than what I was looking for, but again she was, she was not, she didn't have a really young mind, like a really green mind, so that's another thing. So age can be really quite difficult to get something that's been there, done it all, but is an absolute nutter, and you can get something that's not been there and done it all, but is the same as, as anything. So again, it's, you have to go and try the horse and actually see what it's like. So the next one is height. You really have to think about what kind of height you want in a horse before you go out and start looking at horses. So mine was 15 to 16 hands, so anything in that range I was happy with because I know that range kind of fits me. You don't want to go and look at something and then you get there and it's too small or you get there and it's way too big because you haven't thought about what height you actually want. So that is the next one again, that is personal preference of do you want something bigger than like I'm only 5'3", but I could like horses at 17 hands, um, which I don't because I can't get on them, but I need a step ladder. But it is, again, personal preference, but you do need to think about what size you want before you go out and look for any horses. Also, don't be caught out on if you want a mare or a gelding or what colour you want. It really is personal preference and like I said in my original video, I did not want a mare, I did not want a grey and I did not want anything with cob in it. And I got a grey Connie Cross cob mare. So you kind of have to take from point two, three and five. So from two, which is what you want to do with the horse, point three, which is you want to kick along, novice, anything like that. Is it a kick along? Is it not? Because like, if you do buy a kick along and you hate kick along, you're going to end up regretting it. And then five, which is the high range. Between them, three points, so two, three, and five, if it's in your kind of that range, even though it could be a mare or a gelding or a grey or anything like that, do have a try of it and just see what you think. Like, you can try as many horses as you, as you need to. Again, I didn't go to see Moose. I went to see what I wanted, which was an Irish sport horse, gelding, seven-year-old. And I didn't like him. And he had her, and he was like, I think you'd really like her. Got her out, and basically that, that was it. Um, so, yeah, it's, sometimes I do think the horse picks you more than you pick the horse sometimes. So, now that you've got that kind of list of what you're looking for you can go out and start having a look like online at some horses so when i bought moon you could still buy with buy horses on facebook so they still had ads and everything like that on facebook that you can have a look at which is a bit difficult now because they're not so much you do still get some ads on facebook but there's not as many um so it's quite hard to know where to look for ads now but there is some websites like um what like horse mart and stuff like that but i will try and tag some underneath just so you kind of know but it is it is a little bit more tricky now than it was when i bought moon now that you've done that have a look see what's out there if a, if a horse catches your eye try and have a look at obviously speak to the person over, over the phone or online um ask as many questions as you, as you possibly can vices um, um behavior is it scared of anything is it aggressive is it really like um boishy or like is it really you get as many questions out there as you possibly can 
Um, the more questions, the better. The more you know about that horse before you can go and see it. See as much video of it being ridden, and um, if it's the jumping horse you want to see it being jumper, jump, see it like dressage, see as much video as you possibly can for this horse before you go and see it. Being handled, feet picked out, is it good with the saria, is it good with the dentist, is it good with the vet, kind of thing. Just get as much out there, as much information on that horse as you possibly can. Next, before you go and see this horse, or even before you've asked all these questions to the person, really, really do your research on the person that is selling this horse. There are so many dodgy dealers out there that it is absolutely unbelievable. I'm going to put some Facebook pages down below of like the dodgy dealer pages, like groups on, on Facebook and stuff, just so that you've got that down there. So if you do go to have a look or you see a horse, you can literally type their name in and it will come up with everything. If they're good, or most of the time they're bad. But if they're good, and not all this other stuff. So it is so important. I myself got caught out by a dodgy dealer when I was looking for my first horse. Um, I did end up losing a deposit, but it's better than if I'd have gone through with the purchase. So I found out after I had gone and seen the horse, I put a deposit on it, absolutely fell in love with it. And then I found out after that that person was a dodgy dealer, so yes. But it was also better to save myself in the long run, like just being, I know I've lost my deposit, but just move on kind of thing. So always, always, always do as much research as you can. So when you're going to see the horse, make sure that everything you you want to see that horse being groomed, you want to see that horse being tacked up, you want to see that horse having feet picked out, everything. Before you've even done and touched the horse or try to pick its feet up, you want to see it done first. Next, getting on to riding. Always, always, always get them to ride the horse first. Never ever get on a horse that you have not seen being there, that you haven't seen being ridden in person. Um, because videos can be, you can cut out the bits that you don't want to see. So, see it being ridden, if it, you want it to jump, see it being jumped, everything like that. So, you see it before you get on it and then make your mind up whether you think, right, that horse looks a bit too sharp for me, or that horse looks quite nice, or it looks like too much of a kick along, which I'm just not even going to um, bother kind of wasting my time um, of getting on and trying a horse that I'm very probably not going to want. So I did do that um, with one horse that I saw ridden that was a hip a lot. Like this girl's legs did not stop moving and I didn't even see it jump, she literally got on it and was on it for about five minutes and the whole time she was kicking and I went to her like I, I don't want to try it, he's not, he's not what I'm looking for, he's not off the leg too much of a kick along and you never know they might have something there that now they see what you want or see what you don't want they might have something that might interest you because they know kind of what you want now so always 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 do that one more thing so after i got stung by the dodgy dealer i was a bit nervous and i did speak to the person about where i got moved from about that um when i went to see gelding for the next moon and i rode moon and i absolutely fell in love with her but i just wanted to be as safe as possible like this dealer did have really good reviews i did check all everything before i went so he was really highly recommended he was actually a show jumper so he was he was he was great and i said to him i really really like her but i would like to come back and hack her out so he, I said to him, would you like a deposit? And obviously because he said, with what's happened before, don't worry about the deposit. I will not sell her until you come back and ride her and hack her out. So, which was absolutely lovely of him. So I go back a couple of days later and I hack her out. And it is one of the most funniest things I actually remember because he was riding one of his show jumpers and I'm on moon, a little six year old that hasn't really, like it's just been hunted and kind of just been pulled off a bit. And we're going down this lane and Moon's off in front and she's trotting along and she's been an absolute angel. She's actually less sharp out hacking than she was in the school. But again, I think that's because she was hunted and stuff like that. So she's more comfortable out 
we're confined in a school, she was a bit like, Ooh, which she's not like that now, thank God. But so we're, we're trotting down the road and then he goes in front and he show drop, but absolutely loses his head over a signpost. Like, that's so always there because it was a proper one um, about, it, it was a sign about, funny enough, it was a sign that had horses on it that said, watch out for horses. And his show jumper went absolutely ballistic. And I'm sitting on moon thinking, please do not be a horse that just follows another horse. Because you know when you get to see some horses where if one horse gets worked up or is scared of something, the other horse thinks it needs to be. And bless Moon's little cotton salt. She just stood there and looks at this show jumper as if to say, What is wrong with you? And then from there I went to him, I'll have her. <laughs> So we got back, I, I fell in love with her, so I did, still he said he didn't want to deposit, he said fine, because um, I wanted to get a betting done and I think that is quite important, some people say it's not, some people say it's a waste of money, but I just think to kind of be on the safe side of, I know they can't catch everything, but if they've got, if they've got a problem with their eyes, if they've got a problem anywhere that they might be able to catch before you buy it definitely do it so even if you just get a vet check even if you don't get like a vest in like you can get a two star a two stage or a five stage vest in and then obviously it goes up you can have x-rays and blood and everything i had a five star vest in and they take blood but they don't run it into it you say to them in a week or two the horses and that stuff and you run the blood to see if it's been dope so there's another thing i would never ever ever buy a horse unseen I know a lot of people do and they've had a lot of success and you've got some people say that it's like the worst thing you can do but personally I would never buy a horse that's unseen you just you can't see everything from videos and photos and, and stuff like that it's just it's not what it is um I had her moon vetted which is the five stage and I actually went down for the vetting so even though it's two hour drive I went down for her vetting so I got, got to see her three times before I actually purchased her and rode her twice um, the guy rode her for the vetting and she had the vet in and everything was fine until age and everything was like, yeah, everything's fine, eyes fine. She did have a slight, slight splint in her left front leg, which was not a problem. He said that's not a problem. Like, just make sure that um, if she's on really hard ground, just make sure it doesn't flare up. And if it does, then just ice it for her that, which I've never had any problems with her splint. Um, I do always ride her in boots, just to give her that little bit more support but see again i wouldn't have known that if I didn't have a check or anything like that so that is my advice if i have forgotten anything please comment down below um and then give some more advice to any people that are watching this of what they should be looking for what should they should look out for and stuff like that so that is the end of this video I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. It is such a minefield buying a horse. It is one of the hardest things you can do. They say, oh, it's fine, it's like, but it's so hard. I saw, I don't even know how many horses. On my video, that wasn't even all the horses that I saw. So I think I rode about 10 horses. So yes, that is the end of the video. So bye guys. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll leave some extra videos for you on this side and this side and I'll leave the subscribe button up here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye guys.